hard. You were very determined. Yeah. Where did that determination come from? I had a hard head. You did? Yeah, my dad says he's a hard head. Mm -hmm. He's the hard head of the family. Yeah, he'll make it because he's got a hard head. And a determination, he just won't quit. Al Green, born Albert Green, on April 13, 1946, in Forest City, Arkansas, where he formed a gospel quartet, the Green Brothers. At the age of nine, they toured throughout the South in the mid-50s, before the family relocated to Grand Rapids, Michigan. Uh, it was just a gospel group that uh, I suppose he found out that we could sing. We didn't know it. So, <laughs> I mean, I listened to one of those tapes, you know, back at the time, and it's just like, I don't know. I, I, was, I wasn't developed. I was just coming into, uh, my brother always did all the lead singing. So, you know, I don't know what I was doing, really. I was just fitting in the group, you know, as long as I got a new suit. That was it. My father is like very stern and we have a gospel group here and you're listening to this junk. And I'm going like, yeah, but dad, listen, this, this, this guy hit these high notes. Jackie Wilson, your love, your love keep lifting me. He said, I'm gonna lift you right out of here. <laughs> <laughs> so eight years, I went without singing the music. The Green Brothers continued to perform in Grand Rapids, but Al's father kicked the boy out of the group after he caught him listening to Jackie Wilson. At the age of 16, Al formed an R&B group, Al Green and the Creations, with several of his high school friends. Two creation members, Curtis Rogers, and Palmer James founded their own independent record company, Hotline Music Journal, and had the group record for the label. By that time, the creations had been renamed The Soulmates. The group's first single, Backup Train, became a surprise hit climbing to number five on the R&B charts early in 1968. The Soulmates attempted to record another hit, but all of their subsequent singles failed to find an audience. I was brought up in the church and I wanted to sing rhythm and blues. And I, I wanted to listen to Jackie Wilson, Sam Cooke, Otis Redding, da 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 da, I got thrown out of the house. Oh, <laughs> by my dad. Okay. If you're going to play that kind of music, you can afford to support yourself. And if that's the case, uh -oh. <laughs> so, you know, I had to go live with Lee Burgess, who was our tenor singer in Al Green and the Creations Group. And that's where we come up with the backup train. Okay. Okay. In 1969, Al Green met band leader and High Records Vice President Willie Mitchell while on tour in Midland, Texas. Impressed with Green's voice, he signed the singer to High Records and began collaborating with Al on his debut album. I was drinking a beer at the table and I had my back to the bandstand. So this kid started singing and I turned around and I said, when it was over, I said, Jimmy, tell, tell the kid to come over here. So he came over. I said, what you say your name on? He said, Al Green. I said, man, you got a beautiful voice. I said, you can cut a hit record. I said, why don't you go back to Memphis with me? And uh, if we work real hard, I said, we can cut some hit records. This is a raw recording studio where all the records were made for high records. This is, uh, I guess you would call it historic Place. The ceiling's much, uh, it's not as tall here as it is, as gold back it goes up. And I think it gives the studio a unique sound. 
And we probably stand in the same area that Al used to recall. He, he liked to stand right here. That's why you like one spot, the same spot all the time. This particular mic here is a mic that Al Green has used all his life in here. He called it his mic. I keep it here all the time. It's mic number nine. He always loved to sing on this mic. That's where he made all his records on. The style came up because Al was singing. He was really singing hard. And I used to tell Al, you need to soften up some. I said, you, you, you. He said, but I, you know, I want to sound like a... I said, Al, you, you got a good falsetto. We need to settle this music down. So at that time, I, all my life, I tampered in jazz chords and everything. So I began to write some jazz chords and, and uh, try to get an, another sound for it. So finally one Saturday afternoon I was tamping around the piano and I came up with this melody of Let's Stay Together. And I said, this could be something. So I kept messing with Al was in England and so when Al came back, we went in the studio and I played it for him on the piano and at this time, Al Jackson was just sitting down, playing drums with his hands, just imagining what it what it would be like. So when Al came in, Al said, "Well, I said, give me five minutes and I'll write some words to it." So Al walked around and said, "About fifteen minutes later, he came back with some words, and we started messing with this song." So about a week later, we put the track down. And that's where everything happened. We over here in the ghetto area, and there's a bunch of winos out there, and they were all out there drinking and whatever. So I said, why don't you go and get four or five gallons of wine? Let's bring these people in the studio. So we brought about 50 people in here, and all the winos that were drinking wine, laid on the floor, we were cutting the record. And we'd all tell them to be quiet. And if you notice on the Let's Stay Together album, you hear a lot of noise in the background, but it's the wine. <laughs> and I wanted the song not to be just a song that stays in one place. I think a song should be like going up, climbing a mountain. I think a song should start at the bottom and climb to the top. And I think when the when you get to the top and you can't go any further, you don't have any more elevation. I think you ought to fade it out or cut it off. Released in early 1970, Green's debut album, Green is Blues, showcased the signature sound he and Mitchell devised. A sine wave, sexy groove highlighted by horn, punctuations, and string beds that let Green showcase his remarkable facetta. While the album didn't spawn any hit singles, it was well received and set the stage for the breakthrough success of his second album, Al Green Gets Next to You, 1970, launched his first hit single, Tired of Being Alone, which began a streak of four straight gold singles. Uh, it's interesting how your first exposure to music was gospel singing that you did with your family yeah. and and that you eventually came yeah. back to it in a yeah. very dramatic way after you had yeah. been in the secular world. A very yes. po- I mean, one of the, the most popular R&B soul singer. Yeah, I was a pirate. <laughs> <laughs> what do you oh, mean? Yeah. Well, gee, I was the first one of the guys to start carrying these bags. Uh, everybody said a guy is funny carrying a bag. I was on these shows carrying a little old bag, and I had a little hair comb and a little uh, brush and a, and a little uh, phone book. That was all I had in my little bag. And at that time, it wasn't a big bag like they'd grown to be. It was just a little tiny little bag. And you know, and I was a f- so we were pirates in reference to singing songs where you don't don't have to ha- ha- scream just. Like, you know, that's right. We use spending my day, you know, it's, you know, and I said, thinking about you, girl. Uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, you that, different the calm, things. That's, like, uh huh. Rather got, than having to shout out the words, you're right. right. 
you knew that it was okay to be quiet in saying the words. That's what Willie Mitchell taught me, right? Mm. In Memphis, you know, was you don't have to just say it, Al, if you just say it. I thought you had to go, ah! You know, he says, Al, no, 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 cut, cut, <laughs> the tape cut. Uh, Al, you don't have to just say, you know, uh, 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 I'm so in love with you. Don't, 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 don't. So I, he said to run it, because he says, tape. And I just said, boom, ba, boom, ba, ba, and I go, I'm so in love. I says, oh, Willie, the cut, the cut, cut. Okay. I, I just had to learn little by little that you just say it and that it's already said. You don't have to, you know, that's right. The words were strong enough, right? That it, I can't you didn't need to shout them out. Right, it, it came up. But, and it took you a while to, 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 to finally learn that, right? Before you, had, before you actually started recording that way. Right, mm -hmm. you gotta, that's right. You gotta meditate on it and uh, you gotta dream it. And uh, another key point was we learned uh, the week, um, you have to see what you want ahead of you as being already successful. Let's Stay Together, 1972, was his first genuine hit album, climbing to number eight on the pop charts. Its title track became his first number one single, I'm Still In Love With You, which followed only a few months later was an even greater success, peaking at number four and launching the hit, Look What You've Done For Me. By the release of 1973's Call Me, Green was known as both a hit maker and an artist who released consistently engaging, frequently excellent, critically acclaimed albums. His hits continued uninterrupted through the next two years with Call Me. Here I Am and Sha La La Make Me Happy. All becoming top 10 gold singles. At the height of his popularity, Green's former girlfriend, Mrs. Mary Woodson broke into his Memphis home in October 1974 and poured boiling grits on the singer as he was bathing, inflicting second degree burns on his back, stomach and arm. After assaulting Green, she killed herself with his gun. Green interpreted the violent incident as a sign from God that he should enter into the ministry. By 1976, he had bought a church in Memphis and had become an ordained pastor of the Full Gospel Tabernacle. Though he had begun to seriously pursue religion, he had not given up singing R&B, and he released three other Mitchell-produced albums, Al Green is Love, 1975. Full of Fire, 1976. Have a Good Time, 1976. After the Incident. However, his albums began to sound formalic and his sales started to slip by the end of 1976. With disco cutting heavily into his audience. In order to break free from his slump, Green stopped working with Willie Mitchell in 1977 and built his own studio, American Music, where he intended to produce his own records. The first album he made at American Music was The Bell Album, an intimate record that was critically acclaimed but failed to win a crossover audience. 
Truth and Time, 1978, failed to even generate a major R&B hit. During a concert in Cincinnati, 1979, Green fell off the stage and nearly injured himself seriously. Interpreting the accident as a sign from God, Green retired from performing secular music and devoted himself to preaching. Throughout the 80s, he released a series of gospel albums on Murr Records. In 1982, Green appeared in the gospel musical, Your Arms Too Short to Box with God, with Patti LaBelle. In 1985, he reunited with Willie Mitchell. Four, He Is the Light, his first album, for a and Records. All right. Bob. You're still. Did you enjoy? You're still bad, bro. <laughs> That's fantastic. Al, the, the title uh, of that song, uh, um, we think, deserves an explanation. I know it was the blood. That was for me <laughs> and I think it really speaks for itself and when you take the ingredients I must be tired oh, <laughs> that song has a lot of gusto and energy in it yes, yes, yes. but I think when you put the real spice in there it's beautiful and only you know give God the praise for all that good stuff absolutely yeah I'm sure I'm sure you would like to say hello to your congregation in uh, Memphis. I think most of our folks know that you're the pastor of the full, full gospel. gospel tabernacle yeah. church, yeah. right? Yeah. And getting bigger and better every day, every week, every Sunday. It's growing, yeah. Yeah. Uh, really wonderful. Uh, you had uh, another unusual distinction recently, which was, uh, of all things, a uh, Tony nomination for Broadway? Yep. Uh, your arm's too short to box with God with Patti LaBelle. And uh, on Broadway, we got the nomination for the Tony. Yeah. I have to ask you one, one last little question, and, and that's, that's uh, sincerely, uh, do you miss the activity that uh, you were surrounded by when you were pop and R&B singer? I, I, I think it's a lot of fun doing what I'm doing. I like doing what I'm doing. Um, gospel is... Uh, we're trying to make it a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun, and uh, I like doing what I'm, my own thing. And God has given me this to do, and uh, I can come on the soul train and uh, tell a few people that I know what's blood. That's, that's beautiful, and a, a beautiful distinction for the soul train gang and the producers and also. Absolutely. Give them a hand. All right. Al Green. Green tentatively returned to the R&B in 1988 when he sang put a little love in your heart with annie lennox for the bill murray comedy scrooged four years later he recorded his first full-fledged soul album since 1978 with the uk only don't look back Al Green was inducted to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1995. That same year, he released Your Hearts in Good Hands, an urban contemporary record that presented his first secular album to be released in America since Truth and Time. Though the album received positive reviews, it failed to become a hit. Green did achieve widespread recognition in 2003. His first album for Blue Note, I Can't Stop. One and a half years later, he followed it with Everything's Okay. His third Blue Note album, 2008's Lay It Down, featuring guest vocal artist 
John Legend, Anthony Hamilton, and Corinne Bailey Ray. The album earned him a pair of Grammy Awards. In 2018, he released a new single for the first time in nearly 10 years, a cover of Before the Next Teardrop Falls. Green was also given the Grammy Award for Lifetime Achievement in 2002. And in 2014, he received a Kennedy Center honor. After turning away from the songs that had made him famous, Green has become comfortable with both his popular music and his religious vocation. In recent years, the famed musician was named on Rolling Stones magazine's 100 Greatest Artists of All Time list. Don't give up is one. You can't give up. Uh, you have to work harder than your, your peers. You gotta work harder than the persons that's doing what you're doing. In fact, you gotta work twice as hard. Uh, that was instilled in me when I first started. You can't give up, and you got to work two times as hard as your next person. Don't forget to comment below. Also, like and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching.